Have you ever thought about how much of a blessing it is to have a baby the traditional route? I mean, it happens so much that we don't think about all of the people and the couples who struggle with getting pregnant or even staying pregnant and having to take on all of these alternative routes just to concede and to be a parent. But in today's episode, we're gonna talk all about it because this is a topic that we cannot ignore any longer. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am so glad you're here because we got another juicy topic that we need to talk about. And to be honest with you, this whole entire topic came to me because I was watching this show on Amazon Prime called Harlem, and they were talking about women being 30 plus years old who were having issues with fertility and trying to figure out if they wanted to have kids and egg reserve counts and freezing eggs. And it really blew my mind because it opened me up to a world that I haven't really thought much about. And so when I was thinking about who could I bring on that not only has experienced this personally, but also can talk about this from a professional standpoint too. And trust and believe I had to bring my girl Karen Balumbu Bennett on the show because she has an amazing story that can break down every single thing that I just mentioned. To be honest with you, her story is so unique that she wrote a whole entire book book about my baby journal and it is an amazing guided journal entry for men and women who are trying to conceive and trust and believe as a single female who has read this book it was enlightening to me on my own journey of what this needs to look like and I am pretty sure that it will help so many other people who are also struggling on this journey and I love that Karen is able to break it down in just so many basic terms where it's not all this medical jargon, but she can help you and I figure out what this process needs to look like. So not only is Karen a licensed clinical social worker, but she is a speaker, she is an author, she specializes in women's maternal health, along with supporting men and women who are on their journey to having a baby. Please allow me to welcome to the show, Karen Bulumbu Bennett. For being on the Keandra Jackson show. You have no idea how excited I am to have you today because this is a hot topic that has been trending, that a lot of women have been talking about, especially even in my circle, just women in general about pregnancy and fertility and carrying and different options. And when I thought about this episode, I said, who can I bring on who knows their stuff and who also can do the professional side, but also experience this from a, you know, personal perspective as well. And I said, Karen, duh, like Karen <laughs> is the one. She is the plug. So thank you so much for saying yes to me. Of course, of course. No, this is amazing. What you're doing is amazing. I'm really proud of you. And I'm so glad that you're highlighting this topic because we do need to talk about it more. And I'm just loving the buzz right? Because people are feeling less isolated. Absolutely. You are so right on point with that. And that just really brings us to my first question, because this whole entire episode, we've been talking about fertility. This really popped up with me because I was watching this show on Amazon Prime called Harlem, and they were talking about fertility and Black women being over 30 and what to do and their egg reserve count. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. This is a whole different world that I thought I knew a little bit about, but it really kind of just shed light in a different perspective. And it made me think about so many women who take different routes to have children and how they're also kind of like suffering in silence a lot of the times. And so my first question for you, because I know you have been on this journey before, you have conceived your, your daughter through what we would call untraditional or non-traditional means of having a baby. And so what would you say is the hardest part or what was the hardest part about going the more non-traditional route with conceiving your daughter? That's a great question because you don't, I don't think you expect to go the quote unquote non-traditional route. No one tells you when you're learning about sex ed in school, when everybody's warning you not to get pregnant and you know get married and do it this way. No one really talks about that you may take a different route, a different path to becoming a parent. And so for me, I think the hardest part was one, 
the first stage was just accepting that, right? Like, okay, this is going to be different than I ever imagined. Um, and then I would say the other part that was probably the most difficult was just the disappointment because nothing's guaranteed. So when you are struggling with fertility challenges and you decide, I mean, we did, we did it all. We did hormone treatments and then we did IUI, which is a little less like invasive than IVF. We ended up doing IVF. Um, we went to see an acupuncturist, like we did it all. And you know, the disappointment that you get monthly from not conceiving is something that people don't really talk about or fully understand. It's a level of grief that doesn't quite end, right? When you feel like you're getting a little bit better, then you get maybe a negative pregnancy test or, you know, you get a little bit of excitement because your period is a little late and then it comes and then you're devastated all over again. So that cycle of grief and loss um, for me personally, it was probably the most difficult. Woo, I never even really thought about that. Thank you for sharing that. You said it is a grief process that never really truly ends, you know? Um, when you were talking, it kind of just reminded me, because I know Karen in real life, by the way, y'all. Just in case <laughs> you didn't know, I know Karen in real life. So I remember, uh, and we met at church, so I remember us having conversations about you stating, like people are always asking, like you and your partner, like when are you guys gonna have babies? And you know, all of that stuff. And I probably was one of the ones who was inquiring too. I may or may not have been, but I remember us having those conversations and never once did you, you know, mention your journey and what you guys were experiencing to me, not that it was any of my business. And so I didn't really find out later until the book was about to come out, okay? And I said, oh shoot, all of this happened and I just wasn't even aware. And so it just really, it kind of made me feel sad because I was like, oh, my friend is going through this and I didn't know that you were going through this or how to support you on that. But I was thinking about all of the other women who are doing the same process in silence because people be all up in your business and you know, people have their feelings and their emotions about things. And I never really thought about how sh how just strenuous and hard and difficult it is to kind of be managing that with your partner, but still have family, friends on the outside who want to see you have a family, but they don't really know how to, you know, show up for you. Can you speak a little bit about what that experience was for you? I know you talk a lot about that in your book, but can you share a little bit more? Yeah. You know, looking back, Keandra, I would have done things differently. Um, I think now I found community, but I didn't really find community until I started to be more vulnerable. It is very isolating because people don't really know what to say. And sometimes when you put yourself out there and you share a little, then someone may come back with like um, a response of, oh, just, just pray about it or you know, just relax and it'll happen. That's what happened to me. You know, I wait, I tried for three months and you know, I just relaxed and it happened. And it's like, that's not what we're talking about yet. We're talking about, we've been trying for years, right? And so sometimes I think people don't know what to say. So they're quick to respond in a way that they want to comfort you, but it comes off as like toxic positivity. And it could be very um, difficult to hear that. And it doesn't validate you at that moment. So for me, I, I struggled back and forth between being vulnerable and trying to share and then maybe not getting the response that I thought was okay. And then just, you know, responding like, oh yeah, we're trying. Yeah, one day, you know, knowing I'm over here going through IUI treatments and hormone treatments and, you know, taking herbs. It was really, really difficult. And I, I would say for family and friends who want to be supportive, it is very difficult because everyone on this journey they're at different stages. They need different levels of support. But I would say for myself and for the women and men that I've supported through this journey, we really want people just to listen, right? So sometimes it's just about listening, validating like, man, that is really difficult. I'm so sorry. You know, maybe offering support because the same way that we offer support to other people who are maybe grieving, whether it's a loss of a relationship, um, actual loss, like to death, we support them. We sometimes just show up, we, we bring them food, we just are present. And sometimes when someone is dealing with fertility challenges, that's what they need. They may just need you to be present or to ask them, how can you help them? Because all of the advice, though some of it may be 
good advice. At the moment, it just may not be received the way that you think it will be received. And I hope the people who are listening, they're really soaking that in because I know I'm soaking it in because I know I have a lot of people in my life who are on different journeys. And I know tons of friends that I have recommended your book to who are on this journey or who just, you know, conceived a baby through different means and they found it so helpful. Even as a single female who currently is not married or does not have children of my own, I found your book really informative for me. And so what would you say if there is somebody who's like, 30 plus, 30, let's say 35, 30, because you know, that's the, that's the age these days, 35 plus years old, who doesn't currently have any children, who wants children, who may be single, what advice would you give them on this journey? Because I know society says we're old, you know, it's high risk, it's all of these different things, but what would you say to a woman who has that desire and who doesn't want to quit on, you know, reaching that goal? I would really just, the first step I think is to go see your medical doctor, you know, get um, a referral to see a fertility specialist, figure out what your egg reserve count is, check your hormone levels, just make sure that you are in your healthiest baby making, you know, um, years. I mean, you're we're past that at 35 actually, right? But you still wanna make sure that even at 35, you are the healthiest that you can be if you want to conceive. If you are not sure if you wanna start the process at the moment, then I would recommend, and I know it's, it's a little taboo and people are not sure about it, but I would even consider possibly freezing your eggs. Um, financially, I know that that scares people and there is no guarantee, there is no guarantee, but at least there is some reassurance that if you do decide to want to have a child later on, that maybe you do have, you know, some eggs frozen. Um, there's different agencies that give out scholarships. Um, even for me, for, for when I actually did IVF, when my husband and I did IVF, we took out a medical loan and that was really hard to wrap my mind around the fact that I had to take out a loan to have a child. But then what I decided for me, what helped me rationalize it was, I mean, girl, you took out a loan to go to school. You, you still pay USC. <laughs> you know, you take out loans, so you finance cars, you got a more like you pay bills. And so once I wrapped my mind around that for me, I was able to move forward with that process and the money no longer became a hiccup for us in that in that process. But going back to just being, you know, 35, I would say that's the first step. I also would say, you know, to try to just, the, the mental health therapist part of myself will also say, try to continue just to fulfill your life in different, different ways. Have fun, do things that you want to do that are adventurous. Um, and so I find that my clients who do maybe freeze their eggs, they feel a little less um, worried and restricted. And so they are more able to like dip into just like, I'm gonna live life, I'm 35, I'm having fun. I have a little bit more money, I can travel more. And so they don't have this constant worry about conceiving um, at that moment. That's so good. Honestly, you know what really scared me? Well, it was kind of scary, was like when I learned about this whole egg reserve count, right? So one aspect, I was like, okay, this is perfect. You want to know your number. You want to know what you're working with. Like, this is a good thing to do. But then on the flip side, I was like, that's kind of scary because what if you do get some news or the information that, you know, you don't have that many or what you got isn't, you know, viable or whatever, and that could kind of make things worse and put you in more of a downward spiral. And so even for myself, I've thought about just getting checked to see where I'm at with that process, just in case I do, you know, decide to have children later on. And so that was something new to me that was kind of nerve wracking and scary. And so I'm sure if I'm feeling like that, there are tons of other women who probably feel the same way. But I do think that knowledge is power and knowing where you're at in that journey can definitely serve you better than not knowing at all, getting yourself in a situation and saying all of the shoulda, coulda, woulda. I agree with you 100%. I think that it's scary, Keandra. And I also believe that a lot of the women that I've worked with, there's a fear of actually giving up the dream, right? The dream of I'm going to meet this person, we are going to choose to have a child and I am going to just birth the child without having to have injections, appointments all the time, ultrasounds all the time, a fear that I may miscarriage. So a lot of time it's like this dream, this idea that people are having a hard time, at least people that I've worked with, right? 
are having a hard time letting go of. And in our work together, we have to process that and like what that means <laughs> and how is that serving them? Because that's a lot of what it is. We have this idea, especially when we talk about women, you have this idea, like at 14, we're talking about our marriage and our wedding dress and what we're gonna do. And you know, this new generation may be different, but our generation, that's what we were talking about. We were, you're, you know, you're fantasizing about this life. And so what I see with a lot of people is that they just cannot let that go. And so it's this idea of I'm doing something very different than I ever imagined for myself. And I don't want to let go of the dream. And so I say, you may not have to let go of the dream. You're just providing yourself a possible alternative. You may get that dream. And I want that dream for you, sis. Like I'm rooting for you to get that dream, but you do have an alternative possibly. I think you just made an amazing point because I think the dream that we have is put onto us by society, right? We're talking about movies, even Disney movies, and you know, just all types of things where it's just like, you know, you're gonna find the love of your life, you're gonna walk into the sunset, it's gonna be roses and peaches, you're gonna have 2.5 kids, you know, white picket fence. <laughs> you have all of these stories and ideologies that are pushed onto us from a very early age. And so when we get to be adults and life just isn't going the way that we anticipated it to go and we have a alternative story, you're right, it's hard to reconcile those two worlds. And so thinking about, society and how society kind of puts pressure on us and views things from a different perspective. I know we talk a lot about women having fertility issues and struggles and all of that. And we talk about that a lot and it's valid. It's true. But I know a part of your story is male infertility and issues around that as well. And so I would love to spend some time kind of just talking about what are some of the things that you learn from that part of the journey and maybe some gems that you can share with some of the women who might be with a partner who's experiencing that, or even just a single male in general who does desire to have children just like a female would, but they may find out later on that their sperm isn't sperming. What would you say is some advice that you can give around that? Thank you for highlighting that because we tend to forget that there is male factor infertility, right? So a third, when you have fertility challenges, there's a possibility a third of that will be female factor, a third male factor, and a third unexplained, right? Which some people feel is the most frustrating because they're like, we don't even know what's going on because they're saying both male partner, female partner in these heterosexual relationships are, you know, both partners are okay. Um, and so even in my personal journey, for a while, it seemed like the medical professionals were focused on, hyper-focused on me. And there was no clear cut test result that said, okay, you know, ring the alarm. This is our main area to focus. But there were some areas of concern. However, for my husband at the time, there were some areas of focus. And even looking back, if we, if they would have focused on that, we could have got the support that he needed a little, a lot faster. Because with actually with male fertility, sometimes with the right herbs, certain treatment, you can change the count, you can change the numbers. And so unfortunately, I, you know, have my own theory about the society we live in. The focus was on me for a lot of our journey. Health factor is a real thing. And I think that a lot of times in this space, one, both parties are feeling isolated. If we're talking about heterosexual relationships, both parties are feeling isolated. But women tend to gather towards community more often than men. Uh, we have our girlfriends, we tell them things, we can cry on their shoulders, we're a little bit more vulnerable for the most part, where men in this journey are very, are even more isolated. So if the women barely have community, the men are really feeling isolated, especially if they are the ones identified as the partner who is struggling. And so one thing that I talk about in my book, and I even include an excerpt from my husband in my book, where he shares just his loneliness in the process and feeling that he was failing me and he was failing um, our family and just the things that he wished he would have known and things that he could have done differently so that we could have moved along in our process a little bit probably sooner. But he was really, both of us at a point were so busy trying to fix everything that we didn't really tap in and talk to each other. Um, and so I would definitely recommend that you check in with each other if you're going through this journey in relationship. Um, check in on your male partner especially, provide that time and that safe space for them to talk, express themselves, share their frustrations, anger, resentment, hurt, guilt. There's a lot of emotion that's tied to this journey. And 
both parties need a safe space to process all of that. Ooh, that was so good. Because it, when you were talking, what really came to my mind is that men in our society, especially black men, they like thug it out, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be out here in these streets, you know, just kind of like that energy. And so to have a male experience where they were having trouble or difficulty or just completely infertile and not able to, you know, conceive the traditional route, I can't even imagine what that does to their manhood, their masculinity, their friend group, you know, and how not only internally that they're taking it, but just how their support system or lack thereof will view them. And so I'm so glad that you shared a bit of, you know, what your partner also went through too, because I think it's just a conversation that we need to have way more often that we're not having. And so even with all of the things that you shared with us, I know we talked about like freezing eggs and egg reserve count and, you know, seeing a fertility specialist and all of those things beside, you know, your amazing book that people need to go get. Are there any other resources that you can provide or share that might be helpful to some of the women or even men that are on this fertility journey? Absolutely. So a lot of times too, when you're on this journey, and that's why it was so important for me to write this book, because a lot of times when you're on this journey, you're focused on solving the problem medically. And there is this huge wave of emotions, a roller coaster of emotions that you're experiencing that is often neglected. And that was why it was so important for me to write this um, memoir meets guided journal, because it is important for us to process the emotional roller coaster that you're experiencing. And so some of the things that I recommend is when I'm working, you know, I, I, I see people for therapy regarding fertility challenges. So that's a recommendation receive therapy you could do it as a couple you could do it as an individual but find a safe place to talk about the frustrations right because you may not want to tell your friend at the moment no i don't want to go to your baby shower because it's triggering me because you may feel like a horrible friend and you're not wrong to feel that way but you need a safe place to process that you may want to share that you're feeling jealous or envious or angry like how come she keeps having babies? How come they keep having kids? They didn't even want their fifth child. And I'm, you know, whatever. And you don't feel like you can say it around certain people because you'll come up as a hater, you're bitter, you're angry, you're unsupportive, you know, whatever the idea may be or the, the um, thoughts around what you're sharing may be. I always recommend therapy. Secondly, I recommend just community. Um, there's so many different apps that you can join, um, what to expect, the peanut app, there's um, free Facebook communities that you could join, um, different people on Instagram that you can follow, just so you don't feel alone, because it's so easy to feel alone on this journey. Um, journaling is another one. So whether you use my guided journal or not, just journaling and processing is so therapeutic. And you could do this with your partner. That's it. <laughs> And the good thing about that is I really do try to remember the things that I need to process. You know, I can look back at it from a professional and personal standpoint of what wasn't I giving myself during that time, right? And why and how that impacted me and how that kept me from, like you shared, from being maybe as vulnerable and sharing with the people in my life that really probably could have been so supportive, but I just felt so isolated and I didn't even know how to share. So... Those are some of my my key key points. And then also I would say just stay active, keep doing things that are fun to you. This is a because the cycle of grief is continuous and every single month it, it doesn't necessarily get easier, it can get harder. Really important for you to find fun, to find joy, and to make sure that you're doing things that make you feel happy, that make you feel good, so that you're not getting too caught up in this. The last thing I would say, take a break. If you need to take a break from this journey, it is okay. You can reevaluate, you can start over, you can quit. It's your journey. You can decide how you want to move. But I definitely recommend that you take a break, you step back, you reconnect with yourself, you reconnect with your partner, your family, your friends, and just find yourself again if you need to because you can get lost in this cycle. Wow. You said a lot of amazing things, but I never heard anyone say to take a break. You know, often it's just like, no, we're in this cycle. Let's go, go, go. We have a goal. We need to keep going, keep, keep pushing. And so I think that that's like one of the healthiest things you can do. Mental breaks, physical breaks. I think that would just be so helpful to the process. So 
Karen, you said and shared so many amazing gems. I know that there are going to be women and men who are watching this and they're going to be like, okay, how can I connect with Karen? How can I stay connected with her? How can I get her book? How can I follow her? So can you share a little bit about how people can stay connected with you? Stay connected with me through Instagram, Karen the Therapist. You can also find me online. My website is karenthetherapist.com. Like to get the book. I have an online store and the book is on the online store and that's shop Karen the Therapist. Um, or you can go to My Baby Journey. Dot org Again, mybabyjourney.org. And that's where you can find all the different streams like Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, wherever my book is being sold currently. You can get the ebook version or hard copy. I love that. And honestly, like a random side note, one of my favorite shirts on Karen's shop that I, I think I had this on yesterday, it says, respect my boundaries. <laughs> Listen, that's the shirt. <laughs> Period. That's the shirt respect right there. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Respect my boundaries. I wear that shirt all the time. People be looking when I'm in the store and every, yes, respect my boundaries. So Karen, thank you so much for being here. I know that you have shared so many gems that are going to be life-changing to many people watching to my audience, but I can't let you leave without playing a quick game of this or that. And this is the lightning speed round. So that means we got to get through these questions quickly. Are you down to play with me or not? I'm down. I'm down. Ooh. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So look, I got my cards here. <clears throat> Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> this is the lightning speed round. So I'm going to give you a choice of two things and you have to tell me which you prefer before we move on to the next one. So the first one is breakfast or no breakfast? Breakfast. Running or walking? Walking. <laughs> he like, let me clear. <laughs> Vacation or staycation? Vacation. Hot weather or cold weather? Hot weather. Riches or happiness? Ooh, child. <laughs> Ooh, we got, a, we got a little spicy on that one. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Uh-uh, this is this or that. You can't do both and over here, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with happiness. I'm gonna go with happiness. Okay. okay. She's giving the, she's giving the, um, <laughs> what's it called? The GP version or whatever it's called. The politically correct version. <laughs> I was like, oh, riches is sounding real good right now. And this yeah. Is <laughs> <laughs> Number six, would you rather save 100 strangers or one loved one? Ooh, one loved one. Ooh, she said, let all the other people die. Who cares what they do, okay? I'll save the person too. that I love. <laughs> so that means, listen, if you somewhere with Karen, y'all on a ship or something, she taking the one person that she love and letting by the everybody else die, okay? Let's be clear about that. <laughs> the next one, misunderstood after death, or forgotten after your death? Whoa. <laughs> we just got deep. We got real deep on that one. You know, I'll take misunderstood. Okay. She was yeah. like, don't forget me. Okay. Don't, don't forget me. the stuff that I did. <laughs> the next one is a night out or a night, a night in? A night out. Okay, I know who to call. Okay, out of Karen. You want to go out, girl? Period. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is calling or texting. Texting. Love it. And last but not least, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Ooh. I'm enough Watch chocolate. For friends. I'm enough chocolate, right? <laughs> That's so funny. I knew we were good friends for a reason because I would also choose vanilla and people would freak out. Like, I like chocolate, but I also really like vanilla more than chocolate. So, me too. Me Anywho. too. <laughs> well, thank you for playing a fun game of this or that with me. I am so excited to have you on the show today. And trust and believe we will have you back for another part two. Coming soon. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun. Thank you, boo. You're welcome, boo.
Woo, man, oh man, did this episode get juicy real quick. I knew that Karen was going to bring the fire, but she really shed light on so many things that I personally haven't thought about, but I'm sure that there are some things that she mentioned that really piqued your curiosity as well. So no matter if you are a man or a woman, my final thoughts on this is to make sure that you are checking in on yourself. If you are a person who is struggling to have a child, struggling to get pregnant, struggling in any aspect of this whole entire conversation, it's important to know where you stand. Go see your doctor, go see a fertility specialist, get checked out, know your egg reserve count, know your sperm count, know where you're at. So when you do start to want to get on this journey, you can do that from a more informed position. And so thank you again, Karen, for coming on the show and sharing so much of your personal journey, but giving us some nuggets from a professional perspective as well. So thank you guys so much for taking the opportunity to watch another episode of the Keandra Jackson show. I hope and pray that something was said on this episode that will encourage you and to keep you going on this journey to make sure that you're hopeful. So until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.